Hi, I'm Charlie Bros. Welcome to Disability Channel of Minnesota. I'm here today with Mark Knutson. Howdy, Charlie. I'm looking forward. This should be kind of an interesting adventure, especially having our <laughs> our first interview not being in the studio here. <laughs> So this should be an interesting task. Always an adventure. Why don't you go ahead and introduce our first yeah, guest? Yeah, our Mark. first guest is Jane McClure. She's um, the managing editor of at Access Press. Um, welcome, Jane. I hope you can still hear us. I can hear you just fine. Thank you. Excellent. All right, great, great. <laughs> so um, why don't we just start off, Jane, if you want to just tell us kind of the beginnings, how Access Press started, what, what created it, and and the history of, um, of Access Press. Sure, we turned 30 years old this May and our plan, like a lot of plans affected by the pandemic, was to celebrate our anniversary in conjunction with the 30th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act this month in July. But of course, the pandemic has upended a lot of people's plans. <laughs> Access Press was started by a man named Charlie Smith and Charlie was a wheelchair user and he was an activist. He wanted to find ways to organize community and in the pre-internet, pre, well heck, we thought fax machines were a big deal 30 <laughs> years ago. Yep. In those days, you really, you really needed a newspaper to help you organize and get the word out. Either that or you were using telephone trees to call each other. So Charlie founded the paper as a means to communicate and organize Minnesota's disability community. And one interesting fact about the paper is Access Press began as a for-profit newspaper and Charlie transitioned it to a nonprofit model. So as, you know, to be able to get donations and raise money that oh, way. Oh, okay. He, um, Charlie was very well known in disability activist circles. Um, he, there's quite a story about him and some of the other activists in wheelchairs being arrested in the governor's office years and years ago. <laughs> and then the arrest had to be dropped because there weren't, there weren't any vans to <laughs> get people in wheelchairs off to the jail. All the vans weren't wheelchair <laughs> so, so no accessible so paddy wagons. <laughs> Charlie was... <laughs> No paddy wagons for Charlie. Yeah. But he was quite a well-known activist. Um, what a lot of people don't know about him was he was very he was very kind to children, especially children with disabilities. They had a special place in his heart because he became disabled at a young age. Um, okay. He always reached out to children. He reached out to a lot of people. And he kind of mentored people on, okay, here's what it's like to be in a chair. Here's what it's like to be disabled. So even though he's been gone for several years, he's very much missed and still very, you know, very well known and thought of very fondly by a lot of people in our community. A couple um, questions I, I like to just ask. Paper for a long time has operated with. Yeah, just a couple oh, sure. questions real quick. What? I, um, I was wondering about with Charlie, did, um, because of his accident then, was he then a paraplegic where he had the upper body strength or did he use a, a, a motorized wheelchair being he was a, a quadriplegic? He used, he used a motorized chair much of the time okay. when I knew him. I was, on a neighbor, I was on a neighborhood press association board when Charlie was starting the paper and I was editing another newspaper in St. Paul, and he would come to us for advice. Okay. And we always had to plan meetings because then not every, not every place was accessible. Like right, should, yeah. But yes, he, he used a chair and... So, so did, he, did he then, um, did he have a background in journalism then, or what was his, his background as far as starting a, a, a newspaper and that? Not really. He was he was he was he wasn't really a journalist at the start. He became a very good one. Okay. He kind of taught himself, and he had a lot of help from his family. He had a lot of help from his friends. There, there were a lot of people who advised Access Press and helped out in the early days. But no, he wasn't. He wasn't by training and background a journalist when he founded the paper. 
Okay. Um, as far as Access Press goes, you guys, um, is there any similar um, publications like this anywhere else in the U.S.? Not really, no. There are disability newspapers and disability websites, but a lot of them are really specific to one type of disability okay. or one disability. There's very good publications for people who are blind or people who have right. visual disabilities. There's very good publications for people of hearing disabilities. Sure. There are groups that focus a lot with their publications on developmental disabilities. There's a really excellent website called Disability School that if you want to read a lot of what's going on in Washington, D.C., that's the place to go. But in terms of Access Press, we're unique because we're, we focus on all disabilities. I joke a lot that the disability community is a very big tent. Yes, and it is. <laughs> we have to accommodate yeah. <laughs> a wide, wide range of disabilities. And we're unique, we're unique in that. We're also the only publication of our kind in Minnesota. Okay. Um, and, then, and then I would assume like every you know paper publication nowadays are having struggles i would imagine access press is no different you're probably having struggles being a a newspaper publication in that we are we are quite frankly this has been a very hard time in the united states for newspapers more than 300 papers have closed and we have had to cut back on our staffing we've had to cut back on um, what we do in terms of pages you might notice the newspaper is a little smaller okay. a lot of yeah, our advertisers yeah. have been hit very hard by COVID-19 a lot right. of our advertisers are disability related businesses and services a lot of the service providers of course have been closed and are just starting to reopen yep so we are we are looking for support we're looking for advertisers. We welcome donations. We welcome insights and tips on where to apply for grants. It's very hard for news organizations like ours to get grants. So we're hoping to stay around for the long haul, but it's taking a real lift on the part of our board members. We have an interim management team of board members and a management consultant that I'm okay. working with right now. Okay. Um now, you guys have been very involved in the celebrations of the ADA uh, year after year, and this was the 30th uh, year anniversary, but because of COVID and such, uh, you have postponed it. Um, are you looking for hopefully a bigger or at least comparable celebration for next year? We really are. I mean, we have, we have a lot of really good ideas to celebrate. We've, we are preparing a timeline of 30 years of Minnesota disability history. We had other features and stories we want to do. We hope at some point to get funding to start interviewing some of the pioneers of the ADA because we're losing our pioneers yeah. in Minnesota. So we're hoping, we're hoping things are bigger and better in mm -hmm. 2021 and that everything is worth the wait. Well, and um, as an aside, many don't know that the uh, the ADA was uh, written and co-sponsored by a Minnesota senator, so um, Minnesota has been on the forefront yeah. of that type of activity. Yes, it was. And, um, you know, a lot of people point to President Bush, and yes, he did a great thing in signing the ADA and helping champion it through, but people do forget the senators and the, and the, and the congressional representatives who worked very mm -hmm. hard on the ADA. Yeah, uh, Senator D Dave Durenberger was actually the chief uh, I mean, author of the, of the life. Durenberger, Harkett from Iowa, lots and lots and lots of people we can name. Yeah. We lost our <laughs>